Well, the Sun Sox hoping to uh, start winning again, I guess. And Ken Tomash is ready with another dugout show from Absolutely. Terry Park. You can't beat fun at the old ballpark, Jim Reese, and you can't beat the dugout show, as you know. We're live here at Terry Park tonight. The Sox face the Bradenton Explorers. Now, Fort Myers has lost nine of their last 11, hoping to get back on track, hoping this eight-game homestand here will be good for what ails them. Manager Pat Dobson's our guest on the dugout show tonight. And, Dobber, has there been any one thing that's been going wrong, or are you just in one of those things where it seems like a lot of things have been going wrong? Well, I think the biggest thing right now is that we're getting to the point where we're finally getting everybody healthy. I'm looking at maybe Friday being the first day where we'll probably be able to play all of our people in the same game. Uh, we haven't really had our starting lineup out there uh, since about November the 12th. But everybody's getting healthy right now. Uh, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, Waits is making some progress. Luber's going to be back in a little while. So uh, hopefully uh, for that stretch after Christmas, we should be in good shape and uh, maybe start playing better uh, while we're at home here. Just the kind of a thing where we have a short season like you guys have where you can't really afford to go into those long losing streaks or somewhere where you lose 20 out of 25 and you're out of it. Well, obviously you can with only a 72-game schedule, but uh, we've kind of held our own. We did lose six in a row, but we uh, split the last four games and uh, really only dropped about two games to uh, West Palm. Uh, hopefully, uh, with them playing St. Pete and uh, Gold Coast, we might be able to make up some ground on this homestand. Now, the folks at home may or may not know that during the Major League season, you're the pitching coach for the Padres, and your job was not made any easier yesterday when the, the Padres let Mark Davis get away and sign with the Royals. Honestly, how could the Padres let Davis get away? Well, I think it, uh, he really wanted to play in San Diego. I think there might have been some lack of communication between his uh, agents and, uh, and our, uh, our people. Uh, I talked to him at length for uh, about an hour uh, the other night, and uh, he told me that he really wanted to come back to San Diego, but uh, when the club didn't offer him an ultimatum on whether or not he wanted to sign the contract they had submitted, uh, uh, he was very surprised the next day when they told Craig Lefferts that um, if they signed him, that they would not sign Mark Davis. Uh, he's obviously a little bit disgruntled. He's not back in San Diego, but Kansas City would be a good place for him. Tough break for you guys, though. Well, hopefully you can get back on the track tonight against the Explorers and get things going again. Thanks right. for joining us, Thanks, Pat. Kenny. Good to see you. All right, other sports news. You know, it's hard to imagine an NCAA basketball tournament without North Carolina State. But that's what we're going to have in 1990. The Wolfpack is a big part of March Madness every year, but today the NCAA slapped NC State with two years of probation uh, for rules violations and barred them from playing in next year's tournament. Now, apparently many Wolfpack players were selling their complimentary tickets and their basketball sneakers, and interim school chancellor Larry Monteith said there are no plans to fire coach Jim Valvano, who said that he knows nothing of the violations. Now, the Wolfpack could have been barred from uh, TV, too, but the NCAA took into account the fact that school is trying to get its house back in order. We took very swift action to uh, ensure uh, that we would be able to correct the problems which, uh, which faced us, that the uh, short-term concept of recruiting was unimportant uh, in light of the long-term uh, credibility and integrity of our program. Well, that's something that's going to be tough for the Wolfpack to rebuild now, two years of probation from the NCAA. And the NFL's team of the decades looking to close out the 1980s in style. Last night, the 49ers made one of their patented comebacks to beat the Rams and clinch the NFC Western Division title for the fourth straight year. Well, when it's Ram time in Anaheim, it always brings out La La Land's best and brightest. And they saw the Rams jump out to an early lead here. Leroy Irvin picks off Joe Montana. That set up a field goal. It was 17-0 L.A. And then Jim Everett tossed two touchdown passes. This one put him up 20. 4 to 10 and you had to know Montana had the Rams right where he wanted them. Down by 10 in the fourth quarter, he hit John Taylor, who cut inside and up the field, down the sideline, 95 yards for the touch. Roger Craig scored the game winner just after that. The Niners won it 30 to 27, and uh, Montana figured he had them all the way. We'll check out the highlights of this game tonight at 11, plus all the other sports stuff. So join us then. All right, thanks a lot, Ken. Tis the season for giving, and when we come back, we'll show you how some local school students are doing just that. But first, let's take a look at the closing down.